Another important thing to consider when you're starting off working with Gutenberg blocks is whether you're going to take a modern JavaScript or an ES5 approach to building out your blocks. And I want to unpack a little bit what I mean by modern JavaScript versus an ES5 approach so that we're all on the same page in terms of terminology because you may hear some different terms thrown around and refer to different approaches to working with Gutenberg. So we just want to clarify all that up front. Now the first thing to do is review that we have versions of ECMAScript, ECMAScript being the standard on which JavaScript is based on and where it gets its feature list from that is then implemented out in the world by, in large case, browsers. So first of all, ES5 refers to ECMAScript 5, which was released in 2009. And then we have the next version of JavaScript ES6 coming out in 2015. It was also at this point that JavaScript switched to doing an annual release cycle rather than waiting to tackle a whole bunch of things and coming out with a big release. They just release whatever they could each year. So ES7, 8, and 9 refer to the versions of JavaScript or the new features of JavaScript that were added in the corresponding years 2016, 17, 18, etc. And this will continue to go on every year. Now with ES6, there were a lot of new features that were released in part because it had been so long since the last update. And then with subsequent years, we see a few new features added each year so far, but not as dramatic a shift we saw with when moving from ES5 to ES6. Now another important term is ES next, and this refers to the next version in work at any given time. So in 2015, the ES next would have been the 2016 model and whatever year we're currently in or whatever version has already been released or finalized, ES Next will be the next one that's being worked on. So the reason I want to bring this up is this term gets thrown around a lot to mean a lot of different things. Some people mean it as anything that came after ES6, some th people mean it as ES6 and everything after, but it has a technical term. So it's important to know that just so that you could use it correctly for yourself. Finally, something you don't hear about as much, but there is something called ES Harmony, which is a list of possible features for future versions. So the way this new cycle is working is that they have a bucket list, basically pull out what they can each year, release that, and then reassess what's going to come next. So these versions of ECMAScript are important to mention, and these terms are important to mention, because calling a block ES6 or ES next is probably not so accurate. And I want to point this out because, especially early on with the stages of Gutenberg development, you will see a lot of articles or resources saying, hey, this is the ES5 version and this is the ES6 version. And while that may be sort of true, there are some technical inaccuracies to that. And actually, we're going to refer to the same thing that they're referring to in this instance, but we're going to call it modern JavaScript. So modern JavaScript in Gutenberg refers to using ES6 or later. So whatever the new versions of JavaScript that are available to us. Now I will say that there is a bleeding edge where certain features, even if they're standardized, they might not be fully implemented. So we'll talk in a moment here about how you might have tools help you to be using as current a version you can of JavaScript without implementing features that will just break or not work. Second up, in Gutenberg specifically, second up, in Gutenberg specifically, a modern JavaScript approach also means that we're leveraging JSX or at least have the ability to do so. If you're not familiar with it, JSX is a way of being able to write what looks like HTML that is then transpiled down into JavaScript. And it can be very helpful for simplifying writing markup, especially if you're building UIs and things like that, which Gutenberg blocks would definitely count as. So when we say we're taking the modern JavaScript approach, we're probably going to be using JSX. If you don't like JSX or don't want to use it or have an alternative that you like, you may be using something else that's similar, but maybe does it a different way. So I also don't just mean JSX exclusively. You can also be using other tools that help you simplifying writing your markup with your JavaScript. Now, JSX was originally part of React. It's since been stripped out and exists on its own. But another thing that is going to be common when we talk about the modern JavaScript approach is it's very likely you're going to be having React, Vue, Angular, some sort of framework in there to help you build your application. And finally, it means that you're going to have a modern tool set. So something like Webpack to do bundling of your code. You might have Babel to help transpile things so that they work across many browsers, and then a bunch of other tools, linters, all sorts of other things that 
fall into this general category of JavaScript development tools. Maybe your IDE is spiffed out or your editor and you have all these plugins or extensions there. All of that follows into this category. So you can kind of see when we talk about modern JavaScript, we're talking about much more than just, hey, this has some ES6 in it and it could go way beyond that. But I want to break it down even a little bit further to what the real difference between these two approaches would look like inside of Gutenberg. So this table here shows us features on the left, ES5 in the center column, and modern JS on the right. And we can see the first feature is the JS version. So ES5 is of course going to be using ES5 and the modern JS approach is going to be using, of course, everything before that, but mostly the ES6 and beyond stuff. So what we have here is a comparison of the ES5 versus modern JS approach as it relates to specific features that will affect us. So the first one is the JS version. You, of course, in ES5, we're going to be using ES5, and the modern approach, we're taking ES6 and everything since then as well. Another important thing when working with JavaScript in general, and Gutenberg specifically, is that we want to prevent global scope from happening with our code. And so if we're taking the ES5 approach, you're going to have to wrap all your stuff in immediately evoke function expressions and iffy statements. And if you're not familiar with those, you could see a link to learn more about those. And if you're using the modern JS approach, import is going to take care of that, especially if it's running through Webpack and everything will be scoped out that way. So next on the list, we have JSX, which you are not going to be using in ES5. So for DOM manipulation, and, or I'm sorry, for DOM creation, for building out elements, you'll probably be writing out specific functions that WordPress provides you and building out elements that way. So it's still completely possible, just a bit more work than in the modern JS approach where we could use a tool like JSX to simplify and make everything look a lot nicer for us. Now, next on the list is kind of a tricky one because with the ES5 approach, we're really not going to be using a framework, right? We're not gonna be writing all our code in React, Vue, Angular, et cetera, et cetera. However, because Gutenberg is built on React behind the scenes, and when you build blocks and create things, you're using an abstraction layer on top of React, you technically are kind of interfacing with React. However, we're gonna say no here because that really is an abstraction. You're not interacting or writing React directly as you would with the modern JS approach. You'll probably be using more of the native Gutenberg integrations in a React fashion. So writing things out that would look more traditionally like React would be seen in a modern JS app. And it's also possible to plug in other frameworks into Gutenberg blocks so that if you're more comfortable with Vue or Angular, you could definitely use those to do what you need to and then pass it back into WordPress using the tools that are available. And then last up on our list, we have our tooling here. So things like Webpack, Linting, Babel for transpiling, all of that is going to not be present with their ES5 approach and our modern JS is going to have all that built in. Now, based off of just looking at this list, it should make sense to you that you really should be taking a modern JS approach to building blocks. And hopefully you've heard for a while that WordPress developers should be learning JavaScript deeply and things like blocks rolling out into WordPress core is evidence of why that is so important. So in this course, we're going to be taking that modern JS approach to building everything. However, I will say that there are some circumstances in which you may find yourself having to take an ES5 approach. So I just wanted to talk about those instances and when you might need to consider that. Now, the first instance is if you have an existing code base that you can't change. So maybe you're being brought onto a project and they just need to add a simple block to integrate with something that exists already. And it doesn't make sense to set up all of the tooling and write this code differently than how the other code was written. So for continuity's sake, it might be helpful to take an ES5 approach in this case. And I would almost encourage you to do it since it will keep everything consistent. And then if at some point they rewrite everything to be the more modern JS approach, then of course that block integration stuff could be rewritten as well. Now that said, there's one other scenario where if you are in a rush and you don't actually know modern JS approach, then you might want to just work with what you know and try to get your block up and running taking that ES5 approach. And while this may not be as strong an argument as the, the first one, it is a very practical one and you have to work within your boundaries, what your limitations are, what you know, the time you have available, etc. So if for either of these reasons you feel that it may make sense to take an ES5 approach, feel encouraged that that probably is the right decision to make. So there you have a high level discussion of whether to take the modern JS versus the ES5 approach to building Gutenberg blocks.